Right. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the evidence that supports Darwin's theory of evolution by means of natural selection. So some of the evidence we're going to talk about includes the fossil record. The fossil record shows things like transitional species and such. The anatomical record, which includes homologous and vestigial structures, as well as embryology and development. The molecular record, which looks at the sequences of proteins and DNA and how it shows relationships. And finally, artificial selection or human-caused evolution. So the fossil record is a layer, is a record that is formed in a particular type of rock, typically called sedimentary rock. I can form in other places as well. And it contains the remains or evidence of the remains of once living species. And because of the way sedimentary rock forms, new layers cover older ones and creates a record over time. Fossils within layers show that succession of organisms have populated the earth throughout a long period of time. Here are some different types of fossils. You can see an amber fossil, uh, petrified wood, and so on. The fossil record shows us that today's organisms had descended from ancestral ones, and we can use information to create things like cladograms. Um, example, evolution changes in horses, specifically in the structure of things like body size and how that relates to the structure of their skeleton. One of the first transitional species that was discovered was Archaeopteryx. And it lived about 150 million years ago. And it shows a link between reptiles and birds. It has in the skeleton some structural similarities to both reptiles and birds. It has evidence of feathers and so on. So for a long time, the transitional species or transitional fossils, we really weren't finding what we thought. So the question was, you know, where are they? Why are they not showing up? Is there a problem with the theory of evolution? Um, another transitional species was this uh, titilink, uh, which shows kind of the, the evolution of species going from living in the sea to living on land. And that was discovered relatively re recently, uh, back in 2006. The anatomical records, homologous structures, are similarities in the characteristics growing from a common ancestor. Here we see the forelimbs of humans, cats, whales, and bats. And you can see they've been modified for specific adaptations, but they have some similarities, uh, spe specifically here in the wrist bones. We can see this as well as in other bones. So homologous structures are similar structures, similar development, but different function. So there's a, an evidence of a close evolutionary relationship between all these different mammals here. They have a recent common ancestor. Uh, here you can see different kinds of leaves and how they've been adapted to different environments, like succulents for desert environment, spines for protection and um, tendrils for growing up structures and so on, colored leaves. So these are all homologous structures. And with analogous structures, we have similar evolution of structures, similar function, similar form, different internal structure, different development, different origin, no relationship. In the case of wings and insects and birds, just because they have wings doesn't mean they're closely evolutionary related. So basically, this is evidence of what we call convergent evolution, solving a similar problem with a similar solution. So flight evolved actually in three different groups. So we have evolution of a similar uh, solution to a similar problem. That's analogous structures, insects, birds, and bats all can fly, but they have very different structures to their wings. Another example here in this, the body shape of certain types of predatory uh, organisms that live in the ocean, fish, dolphins. They have, a, they have similar adaptations to life in the sea. They're not closely related, similar body structures and so on. Parallel evolution is convergent evolution in a common environment. Um, 
sugar gliders and flying squirrels both are able to glide from tree to tree. They live in very different parts of the world. Sugar gliders uh, live in Australia. Flying squirrels live in North America. Again, similar adaptations to a similar environment, not closely related. One's a marsupial, one's a placental mammal. So parallel types across continents. Here's different examples here you can see. Well, the, the anteaters, the different types of nocturnal insectivores, different climbing animals, gliding animals, uh, predators that stalk or predators that chase, and so on. Vestigial organs, modern animals, they have, have structures that have served little or no function over time. There are remnants of structures that may have been functional in their ancestors. Deleterious mutations accumulate genes for non-critical structures without reducing fitness, so these organs uh, change. Snakes and whales. Both of them have pelvic and leg bones. Neither one of them can walk. The eyes in the blind cavefish. The human tailbone. All examples of vestigial structures, things that may have had a function at one time, but don't anymore today. So here's uh, comparative embryology, looking at development. How does the embryo develop? You can see in different vertebrates, you have very some similar structures like gill slits and notochords and tails in all groups of these vertebrates. They look similar during development, not very similar uh, as an adult, though. The molecular record looks at comparing DNA and protein structures. Remember, the genetic code is essentially universal. DNA and RNA look for common genes. Cytochrome C is one for respiration that's used a lot. Uh, hemoglobin also. So looking at the structures of these genes, how many similarities are there in the sequence of the genes or in the sequence of the protein. Uh, comparative embryo, comparative, comparing the, the hemoglobin structure, we can create a cladogram of these different species. You can see the more similarities, uh, the fewer differences, the more likely that these organisms are similar uh, and closely related. We can build family trees. Darwin had this branched tree, tree of life thing. Today we use cladograms and so forth. And finally, artificial selection. Uh, humans breeding specific species for specific traits, selecting those traits instead of nature selecting the traits. So dogs are descendants of wolves. Uh, all these different uh, vegetables are descendants of wild mustard. Insecticide and drug resistance, again, human-caused. Insecticides don't kill all the organisms. There are some that are resistant. They become more common. Resistance becomes inherited. Insecticides become less and less effective.